Good evening. A mother of two from Sussex who was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive type of cervical cancer when she was just 28 has devastatingly been told the cancer has returned and is terminal. Kirsty George from Burgess Hill was first diagnosed two years ago. For her and her family, the news has been difficult to accept, but she says the outpouring of support, including from her former teacher turned comedian Ramesh Ranganathan, has given her an incredible boost. Peter Whittlesey reports. Very much well, we'll have a full forecast, of course, coming up with Nina a bit later on in the programme. Eurotunnel has released figures today showing a sharp decrease in passenger and freight vehicle numbers. There was a semi shopping. Thousands of hotel rooms near the UK's second biggest airport are being booked by the government as part of new quarantine rules for international arrivals. The government is working at pace to secure the rooms it needs near Gatwick, with discussions held with more than 60 companies. The Avon Avon Sorry, the aviation industry is warning that more financial help is needed, otherwise airlines and even airports just won't survive. Tom Edwards reports on the situation from Gatwick Airport. <laughs> Well, of course, one event has dominated the last year. The deadly and previously unknown virus wreaked havoc across the globe, killing more than 2.2 million people to date, infecting many more and causing economic devastation. Next week will mark a year of us living with COVID-19. It was the 10th of February last year that eight cases of the coronavirus were revealed to be in the UK, five of them in Brighton and Hove. A doctor's surgery in the city was closed after a member of staff tested positive. On the 23rd of March, the Prime Minister announced the first national lockdown. People were only allowed to leave home for limited reasons. Last week, the UK reached 100,000 deaths with COVID-19. Today, the Health Secretary spoke out about the latest government efforts to tackle the virus. We've now a... Well, joining us in the studio is our health correspondent, Mark Norman. Mark, this has been quite the year for you covering this pandemic. Just give us a sense of how far we've come. I remember standing outside that. Now, they use teenagers to carry the drugs and the train network to help move them across the country. Tackling county lines drugs operations is an ongoing challenge for the police. Today, the British Transport Police and the Sussex Force were at Eastbourne train station where they searched a number of people but made no arrests whilst we were filming. Fiona Irving has tonight's special report. <laughs> Now, lockdown has been very tough on our children at times, unable to mix freely with their friends or go to school. The ongoing strain on young people is being highlighted during Children's Mental Health Week, with various events and activities taking place to encourage children to look after their well-being. The musician and children's TV presenter Yolanda Brown, who studied in Kent, is taking part in online music lessons and has performed a version of Lovely Day with Billy Ocean to raise awareness about this issue. Let's take a look at her talent. Yolanda Brown! Ah, such an uplifting song and Yolanda Brown joins me now. Thank you so much for joining us. You are quite Thank you. the talent. you, took me back there. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. <laughs> Amazing. You are so, so talented. How do children respond to your music? It looks like so much fun. It is lovely. Of course. Now tell us about the single because, I mean, Lovely Day might seem a bit ironic at the moment. How many lovely days are we really having in lockdown? But it's very uplifting, <laughs> isn't it? Exactly. Absolutely. Now, it's, it's Children's Mental Health Week. They're all being encouraged to look after their well-being. How much can music therapy play into finding that joy at a difficult time? And for our children. Oh, wonderful work you're doing. Yolanda Brown, thank you so, so much for joining us this evening. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Oh, now, uh, on to some sport. Football. Brighton and Hove Albion travel to Burnley tomorrow in the Premier League following a huge win over current champions Liverpool on Wednesday night. They'll be without... 
Now, sun-soaked beaches and golden sounds, they very much feel like another world at the moment, don't they? But tonight's episode of Death in Paradise could provide 60 minutes of escapism that we all desperately need. The detective comedy set on the fictional Car Caribbean island of St. Marie is celebrating its 10th anniversary. And as Leanne Lawless explains, there will be some familiar faces returning, including the Rochester-based actor Toby Bakari. Today. I'll take the mosquitoes. Instead, we have snow. Nina's with us to give us the full weekend forecast. Tell us everything. Yes, yeah, snow on Sunday. We've got an easterly wind setting in. It, it, and there might just be a little more snow to come as well. Goodness, I think we'll all be watching Death in Paradise tonight, <laughs> won't we? Thank you for that, Nina. Stay safe, stay warm. And uh, I'll be back with your late news at 10.30. Bye-bye.